if we move on to the jurisprudence course, I'm going to wait. Uh, I'm going to invite Mona Zishan, who's been one of our jurisprudence teachers, to uh, give us a kind of an overall understanding of his interaction with the students, because he was one of the main uh, teachers of the jurisprudence course as well. Um, but just to give you a quick roundup from my side, maybe we had slightly overpromised on the Lubab last year. We expected that we may be able to cover the whole of Lubab. Um, even covering the whole of Quduri is difficult in a madrasa. And we were there trying to be extremely ambitious of trying to cover the commentary of Quduri and Lubab in one year. And that obviously didn't happen. But um, it wasn't because the teachers didn't work hard. The teachers were working, working very hard to try to complete it, but it just wasn't physically possible to do so in the time that we had. Um, even if we had missed out to ibadat. Uh, what we actually discovered is that there are numerous students that came in and some of them had not even gone beyond, some, few, had not even gone beyond ibadat in some cases. It was the first time that they were actually dealing with nikah and buyu and hudud etc. That they'd never gone beyond the ibadat section. Some had done ibadat and a bit of nikah and talaq, but hardly any of buyu. So it was, I mean, I'm sure the students will probably agree that it was definitely very beneficial. Because it was done in a very critical way, very contemporary way to try to understand the contemporary masail as you're reading, uh, as you're reading Kitab al-Nikah and as you're reading Kitab al-Buyu. So alhamdulillah, we did, we did the whole of Kitab al-Buyu. Uh, we covered the ibadat again, some in brief and some in de detail. And we also covered uh, Kitab al-Nikah, Talaq, etc. And uh, several other chapters as well. The, uh, I'll, I'm going to let Mona Zishan uh, talk about the other aspect of this. Um, so what we now have for next year is that we're going to be running that course again. But now, inshallah, we can most likely let you know exactly how much we think we can cover this year because we've had an experience now, one year. So now we can actually tell you that we're not going to cover the whole of Lubab, but these are the chapters that we will cover, inshallah. So at least we can do that. Um, that's what that that's what we understand from the inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Nahmu nusalli wa nusallim ala Rasulihi al-Kareem. Amma ba'd. So just to talk about uh, what our aims and objectives were in this uh, advanced jurisprudence course, uh, Muftis has already highlighted most of what I was going to say anyway. Um, so the idea of White Thread was it's a postgrad, uh, or it's focusing upon uh, postgraduate students. Uh, so. Um, initially, we thought of doing a uh, refresher course, which was still it was still something maybe in the pipeline. But then it became it morphed into what we have now, which is an advanced uh, jurisprudence course. Um, so the idea was that you cover what you've covered, or you refresh your knowledge of fiqh, which you've done in madrasa already. So you refresh that knowledge, and then you you have more. And the idea of my lesson was uh, to provide three things for the students. One was um, a history of the Hanafi Madhab, which is beyond just the biography of the Imams. So it's not just Imam Hanifa, Imam Muhammad Hassan Shaybani, Imam Abu Yusuf. It was beyond that. So how uh, fiqh was like from before Imam Hanifa, the idea of Kufa, how that played a role into the development of the Madhab, and then moving down for the first three, four hundred years. Um, the second um, aspect that we were focusing upon was the Lalu Madhab. The idea here is that uh, there's multiple uh, benefits to this. Um, the most clear benefit is that you learn the deleels of your madhab. So it builds a confidence in your madhab. So uh, the idea was that we get 20 to 30, if not more, uh, controversial issues. Not necessarily controversial in contemporary times, because there's masail that are not controversial now, but were controversies before. So it's about looking at those classical issues which the Hanafi madhab was attacked for and to see responses and how the Hanafi madhab uh, responded to that. Uh, but the, mo the benefit, meaning it, was, it could be an easy task for me, which was I could just get one contemporary book of uh, Hanafi Dalils and do that. But the idea was that we use multiple texts. So we start from books from right from the beginning. So Imam Muhammad, Muhammad Hassan Shaybani's Al uh, Hujjah Al Madina, and come all the way down to Musa Ala Sunan. So the idea is that the student at the end of the course uh, not only does do they have these arguments or 
confidence in the madhab, but they also have access or exposure to multiple texts. So uh, if in the future something like this comes up, they know where to go. Uh, so multiple texts were uh, consulted for that. Uh, and the third um, aspect that we would uncover was contemporary fiqh. So um, different to the, the difference here with the iftar course was that in the iftar course, the students are given questions. So you're given questions, you're supposed to go ahead and then uh, find the answer, do the research yourself. But here, it's um, me or the book we're looking at providing the answers. So it's looking at this is contemporary issues and these are the answers given. And within that, meaning between the idea of Madhab and contemporary fiqh, where there was uh, highly controversial issues, which maybe a simple fatwa doesn't uh, solve. So when we looked at different books on those topics, so like something like photography, we looked at specific books or lengthy articles for pro and against. So because the students were talking about these are um, alim and alimas. So um, it's hard being exposed to arguments for what you believe in and against what you believe in. So it's the whole idea of exposure. Uh, mainly. So that's the three things that uh, I was covering in our lesson and the other was uh, Lubab, two lessons and one was on Usul al-Fiqh, the Muftah I spoke about, Masar of Usul uh, and that's the whole structure of the Advanced Jurisprudence uh, program. So the underlining goal of my aim for what I was trying to get at is that uh, things like history, things like Dalal al-Madhab, uh, contemporary fiqh or these kind of topics, they can't be taught in a simple book uh, in terms of being uh, dictated. So you can't just sit there and open a book up from the beginning to the end and you learn history, right? Or uh, these are controversial issues, here's one book which covers everything. It's, it doesn't work like that, nor does real life work like that. So it's about giving the students the ability to research. And uh, the biggest struggle that a student finds when they graduate from madrasas is that jump into a, either a university or an ifta, because the roles change. Because for seven, six to seven years, uh, to, to become the top student in the madrasa is whoever could best, it's a bad word, but regurgitate what's been said in class. So however good you can copy or memorize what's been said in class and repeat it in exam, you're a top student. Straight when you get ifta or you go into a university, it's, you, the burden is upon yourself now. You're also supposed to be doing the reading, you're supposed to be providing the research. So the advanced jurisprudence course that we've presented it, it merges that two together. So not only are you you're still getting your lubab, <coughs> so you're getting your your classical training or how you do madrasa, but with that you're getting exposure. So part of what I would do was not just teach, but it was giving reading. So every week reading was given, uh, books were given. So some books were three, four hundred page long. So you're not expected to read the whole thing, but you do introduction to it. You read a conclusion, read a par uh, chapter. So then in the future, let's say ten, some 10, 15, 20 years down the line, something comes up and you say, oh, I remember there's a book there. Right? So that's the whole idea of it. In terms of how the students reacted, then um, in terms of research, there's three points I'm just jotting down right now, what's needed to, to be able to do research. One is there's a basic competency, I meaning you can't, I can't carry out research in the field of physics because I don't have the basic competency for that. So there has to be some basic knowledge prior before you want to carry out some sort of research. Uh, second is to have knowledge of previous research. So what's been already done beforehand, which you can call a literature review, because you don't want to uh, take up a task when it's already been done beforehand. You should you refer to the previous literature. And thirdly, because once you do literature review, there's, there's a research rate on every topic, right? But then you have to have knowledge of authority to know who are the authorities in the field and who are not. So if you hear someone's name saying they've done a research on this topic, you should have knowledge of what ranking they are and are they competent or not to do that and authority and books obviously right so you have books so um, I found that the students that had most of them were had the basic competency um, they did really flourish throughout so the way I examined them was not a simple exam it was a coursework so they had an assignment to do half year which was uh, a review so again it's in the mixture so you're given something but then you have to provide your own insights on an article um, you were given a choice between an Arabic or an English article, or academic pieces, and then in the end of year was an original piece that you're supposed to write. And so from what I've seen so far, it does seem that the students did very much enjoy, and guess, obviously they're the best people to ask for this, but they did seem to engage, and you can see from the beginning of the year to this year, um, the questions they're asking, because the best way you know how a student's doing is the questions they ask, and secondly, the, uh, the works that they're referring to uh, with their writing. Um, so, in essence, I would say that 
from what we uh, set out to do, again, the best people to ask with the students to see if they succeeded, but from, from what I've experienced from the students, I would say that it was a, it was a healthy environment and an environment for development and progress. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing about the jurisprudence class is that we actually had two students who had not finished. Uh, they weren't graduates yet. One was actually only in the third year and the other one was in the fifth year, I think. Fifth year? Um, basically the penultimate year, the Mishkat year, let's call it that, right? See, so one student was in the Mishkat year and the other student was only in the third year. But they took the whole jurisprudence course and they didn't lag behind. They, you know, they got good marks. And the benefit of that particular, for at least one student I know, is that it gave them a huge, it was like a rocket boost for fiqh. Because the fiqh you'll do here, um, while it's targeted at anybody, primarily postgraduates, but any smart student who really wants to study. So if you're doing alim course in the evening, for example, or even in the morning. So if you're doing it in the evening, then you can actually join this live in the daytime. Because it's three days a week, four hours a day. And even if you're doing it, your alim course in the daytime, but you've got time in the evening and you really want to boost your fiqh. Because believe me, fiqh is one of the most, especially if you've got an idea to be a mufti in the future, then this will really give you that boost. So um, aside from the iftar course, all the other courses are not restricted just to ulama. They're restricted to anybody who will be able to um, deal with the issue and wants to um, enhance themselves. So even if you're doing it in the morning, a morning and you can't attend live, you, you, that we had numerous students that were listening to the recordings because they were in another country. Although, mashallah, we had one student, Allah reward him, he was from, he's from New York. And he used to be pretty much regular for most of the days from half eight in the morning, which is about half three or half four, depending on timing, uh, depending on the time of the year. So he was always there at half four or half three, whatever it was, before he goes to work, doing this four hours of jurisprudence before he goes to work. So if it can be done for him, then those of you who are just teaching maktab, right? Actually, that's another dichotomy here. A lot of people, the excuse they make is that they can't take it because in the daytime they're doing, they're, they're working and in the evening they're doing maktab. Now to be honest, I mean, you, inshallah you'll be teaching maktab and may Allah accept your teaching. But if you have to take time off to enhance yourself and to equip yourself and take a year off your maktab, right? then I don't think that's a very bad idea at all. Because I, I think while the, the, uh, it, may, it may be that this just seems like a new tradition, that once your farig, our tradition has been, not tradition that's been laid down by the forbearers, they've always encouraged, because if you go to Darulam Deoban, there are numerous takmil programs, they call them. Same thing, you know, what we have here, postgraduate program, they, they call them takmilat programs, completion programs, enhancement programs, they have numerous ones. It's just that in Darulam Deoban, you have to have done the Dora there. So even if you're Farik somewhere else, you'll have to go and do Dora there, uh, the whole Bukhari again, and then you'll be able to attend them, right? If you want to be officially uh, in attendance. So that's why, d don't feel that this is just for ulama or whatever. It can be done online. And uh, mashallah, there were a number of students who actually used to listen online. There were, there were mothers, alimas, who, uh, you know, had children teaching as well. And they were, of course, they have to try to play catch up all the time. And mashallah, I think the jurisprudence, the good thing about the jurisprudence program, right, because you used to provide them so much additional reading material and uh, give them exposure to so many different books. I think the, the forum, the Google forum was really, really lively on that one, right? So even those who probably never set foot in the UK or maybe even in, uh, uh, or in this place or even in the UK for that matter from other countries, they, they felt like they were probably in class because of the interaction that was going on.